At Quest, the area quantum engineering is a cornerstone of our research. In this area, theory and experiment are interwoven to investigate and make new effects of quantum mechanics available. Among other things, atoms are cooled to almost absolute zero. With a normal gas, you have lots of atoms and molecules that interact and above all collide a lot. And the hotter the gas is, the more often they do this and at a higher speed. So they are essentially something like classical particles, like little ping pong balls that collide. If you want to go into the quantum range, then you have to reduce the speed of the particles. In other words, they have to be cooled. And nowadays you do this with laser light. In this way, they get so extremely cold that they exhibit the quantum properties dominantly. In the Quest laboratories, the shining cloud you can see here is made up of a billion cold trapped atoms. First of all, the atoms are cooled by laser. Then there is a further cooling phase, just as we know it from our morning coffee. The fastest particles escape in the form of steam and remove energy from the coffee. This makes the liquid colder. In the same way, atoms can be cooled by removing the particles with the most energy. Near the absolute zero temperature of zero Kelvin, or minus 273 degrees Celsius, we get the so-called Bose-Einstein condensate, where all the atoms sit on each other and essentially no longer move. In a Bose-Einstein condensate, practically all the atoms are identical particles that are in the same state. And uh, this can be compared with the photons of a laser. In a laser, they're also indistinguishable. And so the atoms in a Bose-Einstein condensate have sort of matter-wave properties, like a laser. So you can speak of an atom laser. One application of such ultra-cold atoms is in measuring time. For this, we make the atoms oscillate between two internal states, like the pendulum of a grandfather clock. These oscillations are extremely precise and are ideal for measuring the exact passage of time. This is the principle behind the atomic clock. If an oscillating atom is halfway between the two possible states, there is a 50 to 50 probability that the atom will be in the top or bottom state at the point of measurement. This situation can be compared with tossing a coin. As long as the coin is in the air, it shows neither heads nor tails. It's only when it hits the table that the result is clear. If you toss 10 coins, the number of coins that show heads varies from toss to toss. Although the most probable result is that you will get five heads and five tails, it is also possible to get only four or three heads. With the atoms, we get exactly the same statistical variations. These variations prevent an optimal measurement of time, and so these statistical variations present a fundamental limit for every measurement. And to be able to measure more precisely, we have to break through this limit. And that is exactly what the Quest researchers have tried to do. By means of controlled pulses, atoms can be correlated with each other. The effect can be compared to two coins that are magically linked. If you toss two magic coins and get tails with one coin, then the other will always show exactly the opposite result, in this case, heads. The coins never show the same result. If you now throw five pairs of these magic coins, you always get five heads and five tails, without any statistical variation. With coins, it's like magic. With atoms, we really can produce this in the lab by producing atoms in such linked pairs. We've now been able to show that you can make much more precise measurements with such linked atomic pairs than the statistical noise limit predicts. So our mechanism is a tool we can use to make the measurement of time much more accurate. This is only one example of how the area quantum engineering contributes to improving the accuracy of sensors. In any case, the possibilities have not yet been exhausted.